Hi, I'm Mike Hughes. This video is a quick comparison of the two aux brakes. I felt compelled to do this video because I've tested them fully. I bought the aux brake that is a cable version and I've also purchased the aux brake with the hydraulic version and used them both. And this is also a bonus material. I also have the uh, Midwest Mountain Engineering clutch. So I um, have a system here of one finger on clutch, one finger on brake, they don't pinch, and then I got three, two of fingers, well, with the thumb on the grip. Just to get to the punchline here, if you don't wanna watch the whole thing, buy the hydraulic clutch, do not buy the cable clutch from Ox, all right? Uh, the cable clutch is clever, I like the mechanism, but I've really vetted it out, it doesn't work, all right? You just don't get enough power to it, okay? It's maybe for the money, maybe for some people, but I don't think for anyone. I got pretty good gripping and, and um, I, I think you need to get the hydraulic, you know, buy once, cry once, 450 bucks. And I would also suggest the Leverage uh, Midwest Mountain Engineering, make sure it fits your particular clutch, all right? And that combination is awesome. So that's getting you know, the punchline, but now let's get into the details on the, it's not an install, it's a removal of the cable clutch and the install of these two uh, units right here, all right? All right, I used to have this aux brake. Basically, this is attached up to the lever. So when this pulls, it just presses up. However, this just didn't really give enough power. It was not, um, it, it's clever and I like the design. It's just practically, there's too much resistance in this cable, the leverage, it wouldn't really do enough in that back rear tire to be just effective just shy of it so now i'm going to try the one is about three times more expensive but it's hydraulic this guy and i don't know i might turn this into a little install video since i appreciate those when I was so this is actually for what it's worth an uninstall just remove that bolt i'm going to remove this off the top cap all right this is 5 sixteenths inch Well, note, I did Dremel a little bit out on this plastic guard here. Um, just have a nice tight fit in there. A little bit of a mod. And of course, you know, you clip and unhooked all the uh, little zip ties. Also, quick note, this guy took a beating. I don't know why exactly. I mean, I guess I figured just some kind of rigor, just, uh, uh, just you know, riding. Maybe this, I don't know. But anyways, it's something to note if anyone else does install this. Okay. And that is a little plunger, which plunges, I don't know. If, so you guys understand, you got your rear brake here and basically pressure or force rather comes up here to activate the brake. So whatever puts force up here is just what we need. Of course, it goes without mention, you gotta be able to move the tank, move the seat, gazillion and three videos on that. Um, loosen this member up, loosen the handlebar off and your guards if you need to, not a big deal to mount this on, but I'm thinking I'm going to take the small end and feed it through and get it down. In there. So I'm struggling a little bit, or not struggling, but pondering a bit where to route this wire. And I actually find this little area right here works pretty good. It doesn't seem to be pinch, it's kind of a natural channel for it. Um, like I mentioned, I did Dremel out right through here and I'm going outside away from the exhaust. All right, I don't think there'd be too much of an issue, but might as well keep it away. And then of course, just zip tie right here. Got the attachments here and uh, yeah, it's pretty high and tight. It's definitely pretty high and tight. Of course, it's not a bad idea to look at the Husqvarna manual. The manual uh, is one of the least suckiest manuals I have ever come across as far as explanation and the usefulness of information and visuals. Definitely worth checking out. Just want to just see how to, you know, maybe this is a good time to check your brake travel and what have you. Also, it's not a bad idea. Always, while we're here, just to check the torque settings. You might as well just have that torque wrench out. I made, I think, a mistake. So, I should have thought this routing a little bit better beforehand, but basically I want to have the cables come nice high down through here and then 
mesh you know in between the forks right and the and come on down so i should have done that with a small end at first but i just you just unloosen this and your kind of crappy stock headlight will become loose and i should be able to fit it through there and make and attach it into that little uh, harness through there okay ah there it is yeah it's a boy and yeah so it acts just like let me put it in neutral and let's right, I'll try to do this with one hand. That ah, sounds a little bit gritty, but anyways. Okay, so the yeah, I think we're doing okay. I'll test this better without the camera, but I feel okay where everything is actually set. I can adjust in here the length, and I I just want to reiterate again that this just operates as a solid piece, so to speak. All right, when um, when the, the hydraulics are not engaged, and then when they're engaged, this little guy will extend up into that cylinder. I think it's called a brake cylinder. Quick 20 second side note, if you don't have a, one of these jetting, this is a JD jetting specific for the Husky. It's well worth it. It just intercepts the signal and uh, basically manipulates how long the fuel injectors are based on the RPM reading. Very, very simple. Um, but you get a lot more low-end torque. It's very effective. It's huge, hugely effective. So I'm definitely going to play with this, but yeah, I have the brake lever below, which where the clutch lever would be. Um, but I'm, I'm going to play with this a lot to figure out the best use so I can actually have access to this while pressing the clutch. And, and of course, this begs the question, why even have this? Um, kind of late in the video put this in there but third gear second gear wheelies i'd like to have another solution besides the foot brake and the compression braking and also just just downhill right hand turns um i just i'm um, I, I i this is one area where i think technology can help i'm not a big aftermarket guy because usually in any skill set it's you know it's the indian not the arrows but this is a piece of technology i'm excited to see what it can do for my riding for what it's worth, previously I had to move the kill switch over here with the other aux brake, um, which was really awkward to press. Um, but I'm looking right now, and I'm going to adjust this definitely. I'm going to go two fingers on the clutch. Uh, I always feel comfortable with that, and I think the lower three fingers on the brake, I think, can have clearance. And I think if I space this over a bit to do that, I'll have room for the kill switch in this area. I'll, I'll see how it all spaces out. I should just note, you don't have to... Uh, remove the handle and the guards and such to put this on because it does have a clamp all right uh, well, it's not a bad idea sometimes to take this off and look at the maintenance and what have you but uh, I did have to take it off in this case to remove the cable driven the cheaper aux brake of course not a bad idea is to change the air filter I have about five of these take out I got my straight pipes and clean out through here a little bit I just, oh, let's save that guy, save the spider. What is that? Hmm, goodbye little one. Just a quick note too, if you have that reed valve in there, you might want to look at getting that, um, I don't know what that is, but it's just basically a tube, allow the air info go lots better. I think that does make a good, good difference. You may want to check the install videos and the routing, but I like this. I like how this comes up. Um, I'm pinching right here, the little one, and I'm coming across here. But if you look, that cross is like really out of the way. It's not really in this plane. And then it just sneaks up without really um, coming up underneath without, without hitting the tank. So, but again, I have not looked at the install video to know if they have a better best practice. Be sure to remember you plug in your fuel injection. And of course, hook up your fuel, the slick system. Looking good. Tanks on. Just the five bolts to make that happen. Of course, right fender on, under hooking the bottom first. Seat, of course, slides in. Don't forget the bolt. Always feel sufficiently calibrated with my driver to get the right torque setting just on the feel of this and the pop up. If you haven't really tried that before, suggest you kind of hit some bolts with the right number of um, impacts. And you can get really good at figuring out correct torque, but I don't suggest it, yada, yada, avoid your warranty. 
but it is a skill worth developing. And let's get the fender slid in and just pressed in. One other quick note on this. So when you press the brake, um, you actually feel that um, uh, the fluid basically kind of compresses in the unit, which maybe means it's a little bit tight, but as I pull this, like this and push the brake on the same time, it's like a back and forth action. All right, and I can't show them both at the same time, but as I pull this, it, it has to go back and forth. And that's very, very much different from the other system. All right, just took it for a test spin. I think this will work. So I'm liking, I'll try to get an angle here, this setup, because um, I can disengage clutch, and I can, can get the brake down there, kind of in one, one action. Got two fingers, which I like anyways. Finding myself actually liking to come out a little wider, which feels this better ergonomically anyways i might want to take this whole unit down just a little bit but i'll, I'll play with that but whew. all right that's a quick down and dirty video not a full explanation there's probably some other better ones on the install but as far as comparing this hydraulic system to the previous cable system the cheaper one i guess this is orders of magnitude better um i can just tell as i just noted that when i pull this all right when i pull when i pull this the brake lever comes up. So if I pull this hard, all right, and I try to like defeat it with the brake, all right, I mean, it, it, I, I, it basically, it's hard to explain. You gotta experience it, but it gives you a sense of how much force there is with that hydraulic system acting on the uh, little brake, brake cylinder. Two weeks later. Here's a quick update on this project, adding another product. Again, it's the Indian, not the Arrows, so let's not have technology mask our deficiencies. But the Midwest uh, Mountain Engineering has a little bit more leverage, meaning this lever arm is shorter right here, I presume. Um, this does a really, really neat thing. First off, instead of having like a real like narrow like bandwidth with the clutch release, slipping the clutch, this gives you a much longer one. All right, and that is actually, in my opinion, very advantageous. All right, I'm not a pro enduro guy, but but you can you can you, you have a more of a range in there to to slip the clutch. You got to adjust it so it's fully engaged and fully disengaged. Uh, there's a stop. I don't know if I can see it in there, so you can have a. Uh, I can't see a screw, but there's a stop in there as to adjust length, and then of course you adjust uh, how much the little um, plunger mechanism. Okay, I adjusted this, so I don't shorten this, so I have full leverage out here to go one finger clutch, all right, all day, okay? And then the second finger, all right, on the brake, and I can like lock it up. I just did a mountain trail run, and I was practicing clutch and brake, all right, all the, all the way down. You angle this, all right, apart. You can just get the right distance there between, and you wanna angle this when you pull this, all right, and then you pull this, that, your fingers, you okay, see the finger right here? Here's the pointy finger, is just underneath. So um, they don't pinch. So the brake, this is the brake, will not pinch this finger. And, and let me just get this finger. So it's really, it's very important right there. This is perfect. All right, I can put a huge pressure here and I got clutch. So it's, I really like this, all right? I was just doing a slow wheelie training and pivot turns. So now here's a pivot turn. So I come up and note how I can hit the rear brake with the left hand. And now I'm using the clutch and the brake to move it along, all in the left hand. It's awesome. I can't believe it works really well. Extra two minutes here. If your life, you won't get back. But I, this is the setup. I'm excited on this. We definitely explore this option. I think it's worth the 450 bucks or so, which I paid out of pocket. It's, it's not an endorsement. No affiliate links or any of that crap. So. Just final thoughts on closing. Don't ever let equipment mask a deficiency, all right? I am getting away from using the rear brake because I'm kind of going to, to Ryan Hughes writing of trying to just get on my toes a lot more. Almost, I'm trying to just go categorically, even in this uh, enduro um, type environment. Make sure you adjust this, but play with this. Have a lot of fun playing with this. I would suggest perhaps moving the clutch inward. So you have that first finger and just get used to that. And then of course, adjust this distance right here, this angle, so you don't pinch your finger right in between here. Just play with that, play with that, play with that, 
and I think you can add another dimension to your writing. All right, have fun. Cheers.